How is everybody? Mm. We're, hot. <sighs> We're hot. We are Coming hot. In hot. We are hot, as always. Um, welcome to the Bowling Green Podcast. All right. Episode Nine. 11. There is a fire extinguisher. <laughs> 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 Where did that I come think, from? I think they've been using it to prop the door open. Oh. That's always done, yeah. I never know. I'm going to move back. Professional. Um, being used. Don't, don't grab it. I was going to say, please don't grab it by the... <laughs> 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 um, a lot's gone on in the past week. What are we? Episode 11. Yeah, a lot's gone on in the past week. Mm-hmm. Um, so where did you want to start? Let's have a quick Brexit rant, because I don't think there's anything massive to discuss that's well, going to leak. No, no, like there's, yeah. there's stuff that's happened, but it's not going to... There's nothing more that we can add. We can explain what's happened. So, But then after yeah. that, there's nothing to Our discuss. Our positions are all pretty much yeah. going to be the same, aren't they? I, think they I don't be. think mine's changed. Mm-hmm. Like We, we had a pr- <laughs> quick conversation this morning about it, yeah. and I think that's Should basically it. Let's just jump, jump right into well, it. Well, the, the developments are that Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party have backed the idea of a second referendum. The um, concept. Yeah, the, the concept. The but they're still, the primary focus for them is Jeremy Corbyn's deal, whatever that may be. Mm-hmm. Um, Domestical deal. Then Theresa May has said that there will be a meaningful vote on the 16th. No, I think it's the 14th. On the 14th? It's the 14th, the 15th, and the 16th. Then on the, the 15th, th- yeah. there will be a vote on, or on the next day, there will be a vote on no deal, whether or not the UK accepts no deal. Mm-hmm. Then, if that fails, there will be a vote on whether or not to extend Article 15. So, May's deal gets voted down, which it most likely will. No deal, most likely will be uh, rejected. And my suspicion is that a vote will go through Parliament, will pass, backing an extension to Article 50. Mm-hmm. That then has to be accepted by the EU 27. That's this right. is the conversation think, we had this morning. Yeah, I don't think it will be backed. I don't know who would not I back it. I don't see how they'd have any reason to not back yeah. it. Yeah. I don't have any reason to see why they would because back it. Because they're... Who would... Who, what I don't, country, know, what I don't know specifically. Would, I just don't yeah. necessarily see why they'd back it when they've already committed to not changing their position. No, but we're talking yeah, about the member states here. We're not talking about like the, UK, the EU Commission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there, there's no... like They know, the member states know, that the EU's not going to change its position on mm-hmm. the deal. But that's not what they're waiting for. They're waiting for us to change our position. Yeah, so no, and I just don't Article think... Article 50 would be the perfect opportunity for that. Yeah, but I don't think they the really disruption. think we're going to do that. And I don't necessarily think we're going to do it that much. Because if we get an extension, didn't she say it was only going to be until, like, June, was it? It wasn't a big extension. Mm-hmm. It was very short yeah. term. She's a big fan of pushing extensions a little bit longer than they were initially uh, set at. Yeah. Recent but the extension would be agreed by the EU, and I don't like. I think they basically said it's not going to be a massive extension. Mm. If it is, I just don't think it would. Nothing will change. I really, honestly, don't think. So, what do you think is going to happen? Like, if they extend it, we're going to leave on no deal. Right, I think we might leave on no deal, or we could be really, really surprised, and some reason everyone backs May's deal. But why would that ever happen? No, exactly. Because yeah. I don't understand why they're voting on it again when she hasn't really changed anything before, mm. has she? No. So I don't. Yeah, I don't it's just see. Just a formality, so we can do the actual. Yeah. No deal. Yeah. No I I'm, I honestly think at this point, like I didn't genuinely think it would go through a no deal, but now I can probably see that as being bigger possibility. Gen like really, really see it happening. What do you think, Ron? <coughs> well, I think a no deal is, is really likely to happen. I mean, Theresa May is, is is very adamant that she wants to leave, so and she's going to carry on. So I think. Yeah, we're, we're going to go out, no deal. She keeps on banging on about the 29th. So, mm. And I, I, I just kind of says, uh, I don't see a, a, a way how the MPs are going to just go, yep, that's cool, we accept the deal. Yeah, I don't think they, her deal never passes. Just it. off principle from the Labour Party, I yeah. don't think they back it. And quite a few of the, uh, um, the ERG, Tories. The <laughs> ERG aren't going to back it. I don't think that even the DUP will back it. Um, the independent group won't back it. The Lib Dems won't back it. Pride Cymru won't back it, SNP definitely won't back it, so she's at a loose end in that, those regards. Who's going to vote for a no deal? It's going to be some um, Tory MPs. I don't that's, necessarily that's think that's it's going to be some, some. I think it's going to be Labour. Labour, yeah, I think some Labour There's will as well. There's going to be some really? Tory yeah. Answer, yeah, like Kate Hoey and the like. Right. We'll back again, no deal. Labour yeah. aren't unified on not no, I know, I know, no deal, so I definitely think there will be some. But there would be more Tories than Labour. Yeah. Not enough to pass it. 
Um, that means you then get a vote on extension, and I can see a vote on extension. There's going to be Tory MPs, Labour MPs, definitely. Um, I think even the Tory front benches will back. Um, who knows? The, the, yeah. the ERG will, will, will probably not, not vote for it, or they'll abstain. Independent group will, Lib Dems will, SNP will back it. So I can see that being the most likely outcome. And then mm -hmm. it's, it's just a case of whether you, the, the EU27 uh, or 26 agree to pass it through. Um, yeah. And then who knows where we go from there. Well, that's the trouble. This is why I feel like nothing's really, even though there have been developments with Labour coming out and supporting the people who vote, nothing's really changed that much. We're still on the no deal, no Brexit kind of. Yeah. And then, and then the, the question of a second referendum pops up again. Mm -hmm. um, there's another March. In March. Is it too late at this point for that to even really do anything? No. I don't know, but I think the turnout could be pretty impressive. I, I'll be there um, with I some some so. friends, so uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. It's just a, we're in such a bizarre position, but it seems like a lot is going on, but nothing's really changing, mm -hmm. and we're not yeah. really moving forward. And that's the strange thing about Brexit at the moment <coughs> is that we're in this weird sort of purgatory. Yeah, yeah. Like um, you've got Nigel Farage on his LBC show talking about how damaging to democracy is that we're even talking about extending um, Article 50 and um, I, 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 can you see him getting back into politics? Like, can you see him running uh, well, for an MP again? Hasn't talk that he's starting another new party? Or There's something? this Brexit party that's popped up mm -hmm. um, that no, he said that he's interested in, in standing yeah, in. but look at him. He's been doing that ever since he mm. left leadership of UKIP. There's been rumours of him yeah. coming back and so we'll see. I think he just likes we'll having his face out there, to be honest. Yeah, yeah I, I just think that, I personally think that the most likely outcome now is <coughs> an extension. And if no deal completely gets taken on, on, off the table, I can't see anything but us remaining. Mm -hmm. I, d I don't Logically, think it will get to that. No well, I don't know what else would happen. And, and then, unless we just, we'll just be in a limbo of negotiating yeah. until one, the next unless general election. This, this is what, this yeah. is what yeah. if they agreed to just extend it for a couple of months, which is what seems to be at the moment, and that's all they agreed. I'm not talking about if they agree to extend it, like, so we extend it until June or something, and then it gets to June, and then we agree to extend it again, because that's different. If they said, if, if the EU said, right, we'll back an extension a year, two years, then I think some progress could be made, and something something would give and change somewhere. Well, that would mean that we wouldn't necessarily leave on a no deal. Have two years. No, I know, but I'm saying like this is going to be like one of the better options to leave with a ne well potentially a better deal. But who, how is it going to change? Like, because May's not going to be able to negotiate a yeah. different deal. So you're talking new leadership? Possibly. So a Corbyn deal? No, God, no, that'd be fucking so awful. So what, then? A yeah, different who? Tory I don't leader? know. Coalition? I don't know. I'm just saying, I think if the EU said, yeah. let's extend it for more than just up until this summer, you, you, there'd be a bit of a bigger time for them to try and considerably do something. Yeah, I don't necessarily know what no that is. no idea of what that could No, be. I know, but it gives them the time. The whole point is, is that we haven't got that much time left now, so if we only extend it to summer, that's just going to be another three months of fucking around not really doing anything, yeah. pointing the blame to the other party. If you say, here's an extra two years, let's actually sit down and try and knock something out. Stop them from just no, I know. Spreading out. In which also, case, though, I think it'll be no deal. I think... Well, the, the EU, I think, don't want to have. Th I want to have this done by b uh, before EU elections. Yeah, of course they do, because mm. they don't want us having any say in the EU elections, which I completely agree with. Yeah. Because if we're leaving, what's why would we? Yeah, exactly. What would even be the point? Because we'd be voting people in who would then well, automatically lose their jobs. If we're leaving, that's yeah. the first thing. If we're leaving, the amount of people, the amount of, of Brexiteers that I've heard that have said that if no deal gets rolled off the table and there's a vote, they will vote to remain. I was listening to Nigel Farage's show on LBC yesterday, hmm. and uh, there was a lot of callers. Okay, it's important to listen to the other side, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, no, I'm saying what is in their general position. Oh, right, like, yeah. How does that make right, sense? Uh, so they were saying that a, a, a true Brexit, the Brexit they voted for, supposedly, even though nobody spoke about mm -hmm. No Deal before the referendum, but anyway, uh, was to leave on No Deal. They couldn't back Mates Deal because it's not a proper Brexit, we're a vassal yeah. state and we're in purgatory. Mm -hmm. So they'll have to vote for Remain because. Um, they've been betrayed. So that was, I, 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 if there's a second yeah. vote, we remain. And, it, and there is remain on the ballot paper, we remain. That's what I think. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's possibly what could happen. I just don't know what would happen if we had a second vote and we still voted to leave. And what what do you do? We just, I don't know, shoot ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I mean, we'll say it's going to be an interesting, yep. interesting month as it has been for the past, I don't know, two years, I guess. Like, um, but we'll see where yeah. we'll see where so it goes. Just beat Brexit. <laughs> What else did you have that you wanted to say? No, no, I'm, I'm taking notes as we're doing it. For oh, the, okay. for, so just There's a really good article in The Guardian today, actually, um, on... I wonder if it's the one that I just got. ...the possibilities of um, what could happen and outlining the okay. process of... The, the well, I've got in a picture, because I found this picture, it's the one that I sent in the group yeah. chat, because that's from a group called Simple Politics, and they're really good. I don't know mm-hmm. if any of you follow them. Shout out to Simple Politics. We'll link, we'll link their Facebook page. It's where I got this top from as well, actually. <laughs> but they're just really good. They're really good at doing, reporting on the political issue. How oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. How unprofessional. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My phone's on Do Not Disturb. I don't know why. It's I'm, first, I'm so sorry. This is the first instance, I think, we've had. 11 weeks? Yeah, 11 yeah, weeks, and we've never had that. That's, that's, that's right. as well. I'm always really good at turning my phone. Um, they're really good at just putting stuff through really unbiasedly. Like they're not they're not saying they're pro Brexit, they're not saying they're anti Brexit, they're just saying this is just what the situation is. Like, here's what other people are saying, here's what some other people are saying, here's the like law and legal precedents that are going down. They're not saying we think you should back this side. They're really good at just giving a really accurate Yeah, there's a simple Simple, similar <coughs> sort of thing. I don't know if they are actually linked. It's a YouTube channel. Kildeer Politics, I think. Yeah. Like oh, I thought you were just going to go for Teal so Deer. YouTube, I was like, Teal Deer is not a good yeah, YouTube no, channel. Not him. Not him. Politics. Politics. TLDR. He was okay to begin yeah. with, and then he just got. Very, very good channel. They do good, mm-hmm. like, as you said, pretty mm. unbiased. I think, they do, they, I think Simple Politics do a podcast. I think they've got a website and they do a podcast as well. Yeah. Competition. <laughs> TLDR, no, I think it's TLDR News, actually. Yeah. So Somebody that I'd really like to get on the podcast. Um, really is interesting guy. I believe so. Yeah. There might be a couple of them, but I think simple politics um, is just two or three. I yeah. don't think it's many. I think it's like a couple or whatever. But yes. very, yeah. very clever idea of explaining <coughs> situations. I'd say TLDR is somewhat does a very good job of being impartial, but somewhat more biased than I, I don't think I've politics, ever really seen bias in their in in simple politics reporting because yeah. they, they don't just report on back so they do loads of different political issues but they do just focus on uk and kind of uk parliament government systems yeah. and issues so tldr is similar yeah. but i'd say that there's been a lot more reporting on brexit and i personally <laughs> think that the it's hard not to be biased towards the the anti-brexit side because I think it's quite difficult to empirically argue for Brexit at this point. Mm-hmm. Well, this this is what simple politics do. They go, look, here's the argument for, here's the argument against, here's like legal precedents for both, here's like the political yeah. system that's going to enable things and whatever. And they don't just go, and this side ain't going to work because it's fucking stupid or it's just not going to happen. They just go, look, we're just saying that that's it. And I, that's what I like. I, I want that as a news source <laughs> rather than watching people just say stuff isn't going to work or everyone else on the other side is stupid they might be that's not the point just you want the news source to be not necessarily balanced but you just don't want it enhancing the divisions between different tribes because that's not helping anyone i agree with that but like i said if you get down to the empirical side of things it is increasingly if something but is a lie, you can't give it as much credibility no, 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 no. as something yeah. that is. But you just, you just present the rational refutations to that empirically rather than just going, these guys are mm. fucking idiots. Yeah, because that's just never going to endear anyone and then you're never going to help anyone. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I've done it myself. <laughs> David Wolf. But like, you just don't, you can't just go, everyone on this side is a fucking idiot and leave it at that and hope that everyone's going to change their mind even though you've gone well i've proven that they're an idiot yeah. you need you need to have that understanding and go right let's have a look at where you're coming from mm-hmm. why you believe these things and like how that process has worked and without patronizingly educating them to see the right way wow. and that's that's the difficult thing so you don't just go you're fucking wrong here's why you go why do you believe that okay 
have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? What about these things? Why don't you trust these things? Or why don't you trust that? Or why don't you believe this and have that conversation? And I think that's what like the simple politics is doing to some degree because they're not just saying everyone on this side of this political issue is wrong and that's the end of it. So they do loads of stuff on like um, ideologies as well where they put loads of ideological positions and, and things on and have people and, and have like arguments for and against right. and, and people who are like agreeing and disagreeing with it but they don't ever go and at the end of it this one's wrong yeah no ideology i can see that yeah. being like a useful <coughs> thing to do because a lot of people that do get very blinkered and find it hard to see the the opposing side on that hmm. sort of thing when in reality it's pretty subjective hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah yep Anyway, so we'll link where that. that, where that came from. <laughs> yeah, well, I need to correct myself on the Shamima Begum thing because um, last week we had this discussion and I was arguing quite vehemently for her not to be let into the country, but I've actually changed my mind on that. Um, and I did make some points about her dual citizenship and us being able to revoke her citizenship, which isn't, which weren't true. So I just want to correct myself to say that we can't revoke her citizenship um, because Bangladesh don't. She hasn't officially got Bangladeshi. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, they citizenship don't and recognise it. Yeah, and they don't want her to be a citizen. Yeah. Um, and I actually think that, that, that after doing a bit more research, that we should bring her in and um, put her through the ju uh, judicial system here. Mm -hmm. I think um, giving her child a trying to give her child a proper upbringing instead of um, uh, abandoning the kid and yeah. letting the, the child be raised yeah, by uh, extremists is probably the best yeah. thing. And uh, she's young and she's you know not. Every, young people make bad decisions, not everybody joins yeah. a terrorist organisation, mm -hmm. but um, I think that showing a bit of compassion yeah. and putting her through due process is the better the youth, way to go. The youth argument, a lot of people take that as, you're young, therefore you have no responsibility for your actions, which I don't think people are getting at. They're saying, yeah, you still are responsible for your actions, but at the same time, you're maybe easy, easier to influence and you still would be easier to rehabilitate. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we well, should be trying to do. We yeah. should be trying to rehabilitate um, yeah, people and look not at how many, ruin their entire and lives. And I, I don't, exactly. I do kind of agree with that meme of like you don't join ISIS. Like young people do stupid shit, but they don't join ISIS. Mm. But they do do loads of stup stupid shit that is damaging to themselves and other people. Yeah. And you don't just, you shouldn't at least just completely ostracize them and never. This is what I was saying last yeah. week. You don't just then ostracize them and go, nah, not our problem now. Yeah. You do we, try to help them in some capacity. With education and, yeah. and rehabilitation. And some sort of just support circle. Just and even if it's... Yeah, around. to protect other people as well, because you want to keep her monitored, because this is a cynical position. There's always a chance that it's just all a ploy to get back into the country. Mm -hmm. Which is what a lot... And yeah. you just need Basic to... It's, it, there's, no, there's no harm in letting her back in, monitoring her, giving her some support and seeing, mm -hmm. like, obviously, I don't think she's probably for at least several years ever just going to be left on her own, unmonitored. Mm -hmm. She might be on her own in a house or whatever, but her internet's going to be monitored. She's never just going to be able to do something without people knowing what, yeah. it, what it I is. I think it's, there's a pure sort of logistics kind of bent to it that people subconsciously adhere to. Like, if it was a criminal still on UK territory who had you know, commit similar crimes. No one would be advocating for like sending them out of the country. It's purely that she's already out. People are kind of like, well, Don't why should we in. bring them back? Yeah, in? we're like wasting energy when it's like, well, it's a lot more UK nuanced. citizens, yeah. like it's the international law. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think we said earlier that Javid might be in a bit of hot water for mm -hmm. just revoking. Situation. Yeah. I mean, there's some questionable stuff that he's done over the past yeah. few months that, that's been shadowed, I think, by Brexit. But um, there's so, so much has happened. I think so much is going to yeah. be fucking shadowed, overshadowed yeah. because of Brexit. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting. So, so for instance, if we ended up revoking Article 15, didn't leave, it'd be interesting what shit comes out of the woodworks. Yeah, there's just been like, been did, not, did not hear about that thing mm -hmm. like two yeah. years ago where there was this massive fucking paedophile ring or... <laughs> Like, the n no one did anything about, or all this, like, bit where we sold off half the NHS, oh, like, or, yeah. like, any yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. It'd be very interesting. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, that's probably I, And it'd be gonna... refreshing to actually focus on, on real policy issues, mm -hmm. and not have yeah, to con continuously debate this, this shit. This is the endless irony of Brexit. <laughs> like, the whole point was so that we could focus, take back control, yeah. focus on domestic issues. Because of it, we've been so distracted by the EU. 
the domestic issues have just sort of taken the back seat. Yeah. I agree, but obviously that's only supposed to be temporary. I know it's been a few years, but it is supposed to be temporary it in could political end up being terms. Another two years. No, I know, but I'm not advocating that we should extend it. I'm saying that that's a possibility. I don't think we should extend it. Obviously it's important. Obviously it's a massive issue. We yeah. shouldn't just, I don't think, bugger it off mm. and leave, but because um, it doesn't go anywhere. It, well, it, it doesn't, yeah, the, the problem doesn't go anywhere if you do that. It just mm. exacerbates it. Like, you think it, extending Article 50 for two years is going to be dramatic. Wait, if we leave on WTO terms and we're negotiating trade deals for the next 20 years, I mean, that's going to be a fucking drag. It'll be a drag, but it's not going to be the only thing we'll be talking about then because I don't think it will be. You know, that we've, we've only done, like, um, we've only... <coughs> what is it? Uh, it's like a like third, is it? Twelve yeah. percent of the yeah. agreements. Yeah. There's a, that Guardian article had some good fi- uh, figures in it. Actually, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it had some good figures about the amount of um, agreements that we've, we've mm. done and the amount of money that's going to be lost. And these are the yeah, government's yeah. own statistics. Yeah, no, 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 I'm not doubting this happening. That's not necessarily a criticism of Brexit itself. Mm. That's mm. of the handling of Brexit, no, which I'm Brexit completely. Itself. It is Brexit. I don't think it is because well, it's not what just. Would the alternative be? But having a fucking confident government that could be doing the negotiating rather yeah, than just there hasn't been enough time. No, I know, but I'm saying like if we had a different government, I'm not saying it will. I'm saying we could have had some better kind of advancements on the trade deals already. But isn't that kind of like it? I don't know if that's a reverse straw man or a regular straw man. Like you're advocating for this. It wouldn't be a straw man because I'm not tearing it down. Yes, yeah, so it's just idealistic thinking. Man. It's just yeah. idealistic thinking. I completely agree that it is, but. But that's not the case. We have to live in, you know, in the real world. No, I know. And yeah. that's why I just think, like, yeah, it's shit, but I'm. it could have been better, which is obvious. It could have been better. We could have had a better yeah, government in, <laughs> which everyone agrees that the current government is fucking shit and fucking this all up. I don't think anyone's really going, they're doing a really good job at this. No. Well, I think after a, can for they a do? short while... You are really at, like, yeah. At points, I have been like, you know... Go me. She's doing a shit job, but would anyone yeah, be able I to do a better that. job yeah. in these circumstances? Mm-hmm. I, don't I don't think so. I don't necessarily think just the leader. I think the entire kind of government, if we had a better mm-hmm. kind of government, yeah. but I still cabinet don't think, in... I don't think it's a case of terrible execution, easy task. I think it's oh, no, I don't think it's an easy task. I'm not saying like we should have... Like, I'm not saying if we had a better government and we would have had 100% of our trade deals. Well, they said, that's what they said, wasn't it? Who's, who's they? Oh, it's, who said what? Liam they? Fox. Oh, no, yeah. I, I don't agree with that. That's bullshit. It yeah. was he never. Was now he's a moron. Trade secretary. No, I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> he, was, he was at the time when he said it. Yeah, that would never. This will be the easiest trade deals. Fucking Trump. Yeah. Easiest trade deals in history. Anyway, I haven't even got to that point. We yet. said we weren't going to do Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's talk about India and Pakistan. Oh, right. I'm going to yeah. sit yeah. well back for this one. This is going to be Rami and Louise's jam. I don't take it away because I don't know too much about this apart from the fact that. So been pointing nuclear weapons at each other yeah, for years. Yeah, you know the deal with India and Pakistan. They both hate each other. They both got nuclear weapons. It's kind of it's one of those things where I think it's like a really scary potential flashpoint for like nuclear war or for it just really gets overlooked, doesn't it? Region wide conflict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one really talks about it that much. Uh, so obviously there's the dispute over the Kashmir region. Yep. I think it's technically controlled by India, but it's got a Muslim majority population and Pakistan like claims certain parts of it. China's even in there wanting a little slice. Of course they are. But last week there was a suicide car bomb or truck bomb, I think. And that killed so it's about a, forty, a, wasn't it? Yeah, they're from the Jaish Jaish Al Mohammed, I think. They were Indian police, weren't they? What that died. Yeah. Yeah, it killed over 40, I think, like Indian security forces. Oh, you guys are going back a bit further. Obviously. I was just th- talking about the plane. Are you getting well, Yeah, yeah, yeah we're getting into the, up, yeah. the pre. Yeah, there's some real Historical. Stuff going on. But yeah, so, well, this was only last week. There yeah. was a yeah, suicide bombing, 40 Indian policemen or security forces dead. Uh, India promised, like, you know, some sort of retaliation. I think Imran Khan. He's the Pakistani Prime Minister and ex tennis, not tennis, cricket, cricket yeah. star. Of he is. did a. He's a great, great cricketer. He did a statement saying, you know, like, fuck you guys, basically. And, like, we'll do the same. And then was it last night or, like, a couple days ago? I think it was last night. There were Indian fighter jets over. Uh, Kashmir. Over Kashmir. And they got shot down. Yep. And 
the pilot got captured. Well, so they say that's that's the issue. Yeah. Both well, are disputing. Oh right, they're disputing whether. The yeah, I think Pakistan is saying that. Pakistan says they shot it down. That they shot it down, and they have one captured. But somebody else is saying that they've both been killed. So there's kind one. Of one was killed, weren't they? Yeah. One has definitely been killed. Yeah. yeah. Um. So the strike was on supposed uh, Pakistani like terrorist training camps. Um, but there were reports that because India had made its intentions kind of clear in the preceding days, that they'd all been cleared out by that point. So basically, it wasn't a very successful raid. But then, you know, the, the raid who knows? The, the, that it happened itself is problematic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's it's sort of difficult because where do you? It's Indian administered, definitely. The uh, Kashmir, but. Whether they're justified, that is really interesting. That's a lot. Is that going to be getting caught on camera? <laughs> That's great. Hopefully not, because the children screaming outside, fun <laughs> screaming, <laughs> not, not <laughs> So where does this leave the, the well, situation that, that now? Well, that trouble. It's, it's only going to get hotter, isn't it? Well, it's the first attack across ceasefire lines since 1970. Yeah. Yeah, since 1971, so it's it's sort of the hottest the tensions have been the, in the, a good few mm, days. The trouble is, is no. The trouble is, is it's it's being it's quite quiet at the minute. I thought it w would have been bigger news than it actually is, kind of being mm. portrayed at the minute. But I don't know. It goes back to Israel Palestine again, doesn't it? I mean, there there is no clear solution to either side, <coughs> and, and, and both and, and, and the scary thing is, both sides are willing to retaliate at mm. any cost there is no will for political dialogue is no. there no. at no. all no, it's they, ha they, they hate each other that much mm -hmm. um, and that makes it obviously it's even more difficult like it's almost like a matter of national pride yeah. in each country like yeah. how much do you hate Pakistan how much do you yeah. hate India so uh, yeah I don't know <coughs> really What's going to come of it? Apparently nine like minutes ago there was a live thing where India was demanding immediate safe release of pilot. Okay, so they have got in there. Guess and say. Yeah. So I guess India was saying no they haven't because they don't want Pakistan to be picked up. Pakistan was saying no you haven't hit any terrorist training camps because they don't want India to look as if they're acting legitimately. There's really not a lot of international community involvement no, which no, is sort of what we would expect <laughs> especially in an issue like apparently Theresa May like has just this. said we're working hard to make sure British officials aren't mm -hmm. Aren't involved. Basically, <laughs> basically, the, our guys are safe. Yeah, yeah. they called yeah. like PMQs this morning. She was talking about or this afternoon. She was talking about um, cool heads. She was like appealing to their better sense of like their better sensibilities and trying to calm the situation down. Which is the position that I'd always, you know, I'd always come from. Yeah. We often have yeah. this conversation. Chill, take a step back. Uh, seek yeah. diplomatic solutions to the problem yeah. instead of and maybe not trying to kill people. Yeah. Well, yeah. try not to kill people in the you first place. You can only hope that, you know, Modi and Khan's rhetoric is not permeating, like, the entire yeah. sort of bureaucracy and civil service or the diplomatic services of each country. When you compare it's military capabilities, are you asking who's going to win, well, basically? Well, but well, like, what's the balance of power there? I'd Pakistan has more nuclear weapons, don't they? Yeah, but India, in terms of manpower, will surely be like yeah. overwhelming. But they're in a, it's a difficult, yeah, difficult strategic position in terms of geopolitics, because obviously we've got historical colonial roots of India, but Pakistan has been an ally of the US in the war on terror, because like producing <laughs> lots of terrorists so it's yeah whether the US is gonna turn around and be like actually no or they're gonna stand by them or they're gonna not get involved at all you know I think like they're gonna stand by India really Syria. aren't they but India is not technically their ally no I, I mean know, they are they have diplomatic relations with them, maybe maybe Trump will actually stick to his guns that he ran on and, and not intervene in this is my thing. foreign affairs I, I think he's gonna keep out of it um, It'd be good for him if he did. Yeah, I think yeah, it would actually work to his advantage if he didn't so say anything. Tr about it. Trouble is, is he's going to have to make some sort of comment. Obviously, we've got the elections mm -hmm. next year. Stuff is kind of heating US up. The US has a pretty substantial Indian uh, immigrant population. Mm. They yeah, do tend to be quite politically active. When you look at who's running though, in regards to the election, you're seeing a lot of 
candidates that are far less into the uh, hawkish, yeah, interventionist, yeah, interventionist yeah. in foreign policy terms. So it's an interesting. It would be interesting to see what Ali does go down, whether he stays down the rhetoric of not wanting to intervene or whether he changes his mind and does say actually we should start to intervene more because he, what he says and his actions do contradict each other. Um, yeah. Well, it's like he said he wasn't going to intervene in Syria and yeah. then they did end up uh, calling an airstrike. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's what we, we always say is that, that when these things come up again, that, that this is not something that we should get straight in the middle of mm. we should definitely take a far more yeah. step back approach no, and it um, is good especially to see. Us, us as foreign actors yeah. in this yeah. particular that's what i'm saying yeah yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's good to see that you know it's being advocated for restraint and yeah to calming seek down a diplomatic yeah. solution and i uh, i personally think that's going to be how it goes it's just going to be slowly getting more well, and more like flights that. have been cancelled to pakistan i think that's just a good so safe measure yeah. really the measures are being taken but i mean meetings and and talks and trying to come to some sort of policy conclusion as to how well, that's just tr- getting the ball rolling yeah that's the trouble it's it's such a deep-rooted issue Kashmir. Yeah. so it's it <sighs> it's been ongoing yeah since, <laughs> since the partition but but i would argue that as the international community, and I'm not talking militarily, but the, the UN, for example, has the obligation to try and seek diplomatic solutions mm-hmm. to these problems, and, and opening the dialogue is important, and this is a chance where we can say, yeah. okay, we're going to set the precedent now for peaceful talks and mm-hmm. and show that there is the willingness to do that. Um, and that goes for all... Yeah. all um, with, uh, disagreements, uh, disagreements conflicts, whether, whatever. whether it be North Korea, South Korea, or whether it be Israel, uh, Palestine, or whether it be India, Pakistan. Isn't Trump meeting with Kim? Yeah, he's yeah. in Vietnam at the minute. Yeah. yeah. That'll be interesting. <laughs> right, you right sound this like you're like mates with him. Like, yeah, <laughs> no, I just spoke to him. Yeah. yeah. So we'll probably be talking about that next week. Yeah. If we're not all dead. Yeah, but I think yeah. that, 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 that's a perfect example of. Yeah. of like diplomatic talk. This is what pissed me off because everyone was like, "Oh my god, he's fucking meeting with Kim." You're like, "Hang on a minute, you wanted Obama to meet with him. You wanted other people to meet." Yeah, with but him. anything Trump does is inherently bad. Yeah, obviously. And I just can't understand. Like, he's. You can disagree with Trump and what he says and or does or what he stands for, but he's actually trying to make a little bit of an effort here. Yeah. Where other people <laughs> haven't really done it. Did you see the video of Kim having a cigarette? No. Oh, it's so, oh, so funny. Yeah, he's just having a fag really? out the back. Oh, yeah. Talking to some people. Yeah, oh, just having that'd a smoke. be brilliant. Yeah. Does he catch sight of the camera? No, no, no. I guess it was somebody from like a, a hotel or something <laughs> filming him, like a balcony. That's but, yeah. fucking ballsy, mate. Having a, having a cigarette. Like, I wonder if he smokes back in North Korea. Must have, I I must do, yeah. yeah. No, I wonder if it's just been a. Ooh. Oh, do you reckon no, it was, it was a social smoke? Awesome. It was out. Yeah, yeah. Somebody <laughs> said, oh, do you want to fag him? Yeah, yeah. Did you see a. His dad did, didn't he? His uncle, I'm pretty sure they all. Yeah, yeah. Fucked yeah, one. Like the only elites in the country. Yeah. Well, didn't his <laughs> uncle? Wasn't his uncle the one that got fed to lions? There was somebody who was fed to lions. Got he got shot out of cannon, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, I thought one of them got shot with a missile. Ow. I like all of the fucking <laughs> stories <laughs> shot, you've got. Shot out of fed by lions. Shot, shot out, out of cannon. Of, shot I thought by he got missile. shot out of a. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, I thought he got fed to lions. He got pet into the missile. That's so what I heard. Laugh, it's no, it's awful. It's awful. Somebody got fed to like dogs or something. Though, like Maybe that's what I was thinking yeah. of. I, I well, knew I'm someone got fed to something. But, but did you see his shipment of like ninety thousand bottles of vodka or oh, something a... got intercepted? <laughs> He's going to be pissed or not pissed, <laughs> as the case may yeah, be. Yeah, I read a really good book called The uh, Invitation Only Zone, which was about um, the capture of Japanese citizens by North Korea to um, oh, really? set up spies, to mm-hmm. set up a spy ring in, in Japan. And one of the chapters was about a uh, sushi um, chef mm. that mm. got employed by Kim to, to be his personal be cook. His personal chef. And uh, how much of a party animal he is. <laughs> um, and yeah, he'd, he'd buy the chef like loads of luxury items and have lavish parties and get pissed up and invite the guy out. It's crazy. He's a nutter. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> The uh, film, the um, was it called the interview? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right yeah. That that portrayal yeah. of him, I think, is is not far from. from the I can't remember if it was him or his, him or his dad, but there was one of them who 
they got there was a couple of advisors who got really they got really drunk with Kim one of them I can't remember he, he told them to do something they didn't do it but he was really drunk or whatever and they woke up the next morning and he said he, he was like summoning them to him to like answer for it but they, he didn't remember what it was so he let them off <laughs> he was like, "What you? What you? All, like they they wrote him letters and stuff, really apologising. He was like, "What's all this about?" And they just went, "Oh, no, it's just a joke. <laughs> Don't worry about it." And he couldn't remember it. He had no recollection of it. I can't remember what the what the issue was now. Left the estate. It's like a year or two ago that I read something about. It. I just can't remember what it is now. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, at least he is making talks. Yeah. Know, whether he's gonna. Whether anything actually comes the thing that is, is it, uh, yeah, election something and... might not happen now or within the next year or two, but it's that slow I think... joint letting Kim join the club of mm. the international community a little bit, going, look at all the shit we've got. And I think that's what is going to happen now. It's going to be a very mm. slow process. Yeah, I think people aren't, well, some people obviously are annoyed at Trump for doing it. The worry, at least my concern was, and I think some other people, was not that he was engaging, but that he was going to fuck it up, <laughs> yeah. like monumentally. Which yeah, but he's actually do, managed to do it, unlike other hasn't people. Hasn't happened yet. Yeah. But yeah, there's a. It depends on whether you think the best way of breaking down the North Korean regime or rehabilitating it or whatever is through isolation and sanctions or through sort of which is bringing which them is not into working the fold. Yeah. No, hasn't worked for a while. It's not going to mm. not going to start working anytime soon. It doesn't no. seem to have worked in Iran either. Well, yeah. But then no. it's difficult because how do you introduce someone into the international community if they don't abide by any of the rules that you supposedly hold in such high regard? Mm. Well, I, I think you just have to, again, set the precedent that instead of isolating and allowing them to continue we are going to try and diplomatically so solve and and sanctions are a last resort or well sanctions I mean, are I the second to last resort I think with North Korea it's a bit of a unique situation where they have been sanctioned for quite a while that now they're possibly at the stage where they're willing to maybe well, compromise no a little really, bit though, I think mm. there's so, going to be mass famine yeah. even more mass famine than and death than it's probably looking good for Kim within North Korea that mm. he's like I'm going to talk to these obviously we don't really know how it's being reported on but like he's probably going to talk to Trump to arrange deals or to do to do something that looks good for him and that's not necessarily a bad thing mm. it's gonna start if, if you just do the sanctions and the people are the ones who are going to start suffering from that they're just going to go well it's fucking America who's doing this why would we like them well that's what they get yeah told and yeah and taught yeah, yeah, yeah Do obviously. you reckon they're reporting it at all in North Korea? I don't, they, they didn't the report one, the last one, did on they? On the one hand, it could be a propaganda victory, but on the other hand, it could be incredibly mm. contradictory to everything that's been... Yeah, it's a slow process. He's doing. He's coming abroad. He's doing meetings. I don't know if they're arranging deals or trying to denuclearize them or whatever. But well, that was meant to be the original. Yeah. But it's a slow process, and it's better because he hasn't met anyone in years, has he? No. So it's a step. Yeah. And I just think we can't just go, oh, nothing's going to fucking work. You're a fucking idiot. And Trump's going to fuck it all. You've got to go, let's try and see how this goes and be a little bit cool headed about it rather than just going, Trump's a fucking idiot and he's going to cause a nuclear holocaust, which is what was happening when he met him the first time. And it was going to be the end of the world. Could you imagine if the, the like Glasnost and Perestroika, the openness and economic reforms that w happened in the Soviet Union, happened in North Korea? And there was like the openness <laughs> into the world. They freed up the yeah. internet and the technology and stuff. Could you imagine the crazy shit that that, that would that open would up to, to the population? Like it would literally be moving into a different reality, like a different realm. Yeah, mm. it would be like a complete parallel universe. It's so difficult to, to yeah, understand what it would be like would to live like, there. Yeah. I mean, you would think that they'd instantly be like, right, it's time to overthrow. Fuck this, <laughs> yeah. Fuck out of this. Yeah. Which is why I think it's going to be in Kim's best interest to do it slowly. Yeah, for sure. I don't and think there's any chance his regime could survive. No. It won't, it, won't survive it won't eventually, but it's going to be a slow bit to the point where... Has he hasn't got any kids, has he? Point. I don't think so. I mean, he, he can put in whoever he likes, so that's the thing. Phrasing? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but obviously it's supposed to be a kind of hereditary it's been a dynastic yeah so, so but yeah. i'm wondering if he's kind of going look i don't want kids and he was not the first choice 
Jackson. Who is no, it was the one who went to Disneyland, to... wasn't it, in Japan? Yeah. The other, oh, did wait, you know no. about that? Oh, the I'm, brother. I'm not sure if it was, was he the one who got assassinated? <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think it was him either, it was that other brother. Right. Oh, okay. He wanted to be a rock star. Got a sister as well, hasn't he? Yeah. Who I think people have seen like twice. Strange old business, isn't it? Mm. It's, it's a real wacky, real yeah. wacky stuff that we've just been allowed <laughs> to like propagate for all these years. Well, that's what happens when you isolate places, isn't mm-hmm. it? So it gets yeah. crazy. Right, Look, what are we moving on to then? I don't know. Jesse Smollett? Smollett? Who? Do you want to do that one quickly? Yeah, go on. Rami, you haven't heard you of haven't the Jesse Smollett case. Right uh, uh, well, I, I've probably heard of it, but it's kind of a bit... I'm not really with it today either. No. <laughs> so he's, he's a famous actor, black guy, oh. does Empire. I've yeah. never watched Empire, not interested, don't really care. <laughs> but he's, he's like one of the main characters on that, isn't he? And yeah. uh, it, so a couple of weeks ago now, he reported a hate crime, said that these two white guys wearing MAGA hats came up to him. Man, like, so bearing in mind it was like what minus 20 degrees it or something was in ridiculous Chicago during the polar vortex it was really cold he claims he was going to get like a subway or something yep. and he was on the phone to his manager which became crucial in the later stages of the investigation and yeah two guys came up to him put a rope around his neck poured fluid on his face like it's supposed to be was, bleach i think they yeah said. i think yeah. that's but even from the beginning and this is what made me question it he was very like oh i'm not sure if it was bleach it was just like a substance um Didn't know if it was they bleach. Yelled, yeah. exactly you're right it's burning they yelled this is maga country or something like that i think it's a racist and a homophobic slur yeah because he's, he's also gay, gay. yeah gay as well um so yeah, that got reported, the news broke, obviously there was like outpourings of support and outrage and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the first thing that got weird was he wouldn't give his phone over to the police. So he got questioned, I think then they asked for his phone records as is like kind of standard in investigation and especially because he said he was on the phone to his manager. So he wouldn't give that over. Then they're trolling the CCTV of this area in Chicago and they find two guys out at the sort of same sort of time. These are two big black guys. From Nigeria? Nigerian Americans, I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they went to Nigeria like as this event like immediately after this attack. They also oh, really? worked on Empire. They were Well, yeah, this is the thing. Like he was friends with them basically. Instead of just fabricating the story and nothing actually ever happened he like paid these two guys to i think he went to their gym as well he paid these guys to come and like fake the hate crime which yeah i know it's fucking bizarre yeah, there was cameras in the area so, yeah and there were cameras of him yeah. buying the rope and stuff and so yeah for days it's been unfolding kind of like you know, so he was going, he was doing he loads was doing of interviews, interviews and, and sc- like bits of air. Seems and like a real narcissist. It like was like, he was going like, oh my God, it's terrible that we're in this country. Like, where's the hate coming from? Everyone hates me because I'm gay, because I'm black. There's too much racism, sexism, whatever. And it was all bullshit. He lied about it all. And you just kind of go, there's enough hate crimes and like genuine <laughs> crimes and racism and sexism and like homophobia or whatever you don't need to fake it yeah obviously it you don't need to fake it because now people are going to be crimes. just that extra bit skeptical of when another one happens because yeah. they're going to go well is it real because yeah. it's why due process is so important isn't it yeah. mm-hmm. and i saw some other stuff there's been conflicting reports apparently he either got a letter like a hate hate mail mm. uh put out there and was upset at the lack of press that it got so he thought he'd do this to you know boost his image but then there were also reports that even that letter was fake <laughs> and he wrote it himself so i already know it was quite empire so successful you're on a massive well, exactly. tv show you're you're a celebrity you've got you're doing pretty well, well for feet, yourself right. yeah and look what's, what's happened to him now yeah. he's been edited out of the last few episodes really he's been arrested he's been arrested he's actually been he's actually been arrested yeah but i mean he's probably just going to get beat off lightly because he's a celebrity as well let's face it He's probably lost his job. Like, I know, he's lost his job that's and not probably part of a his... replacement for justice. crime and punishment. No. But, yeah, he's totally ruined his own self-image yeah. and career. And I just think, why? What's like, for people? a few extra TV interviews? Like, 
This is becoming more and more of a problem mm. as well, mm. uh, and, and out, outwardly more and more of a problem of, of fake crimes. Yeah, you don't need to fake to get social shit. Yeah, social yeah. points. Yeah, there's been loads of worrying instances yeah. of this, or when people designate it as a hate crime first, and you know later it comes oh. out. There was like a it's case a in the U.S. of a woman who was found beaten to death in her home, and there was a she's a Muslim woman, and there was a note. St- you know, saying like loads of anti-Muslim shit. So she it's a hate crime. And it turns out it was her husband who beat her to death, and then left that there, smashed the window to give it all the appearance of a hate crime. Right. And this only came out like a few weeks after, at which point the news cycles kind of yeah recycled and moved on. Yeah. But yeah, uh, it's, it, it's worrying. People's trend. first inclination, or, or what, some of the time does seem to be to go straight to walk to that. Like, I was mm-hmm. at, I was at West Ham game once. And uh, there was a fight a few rows back from from us, and it was um, between a couple of, of white guys mm-hmm. and this, this Indian um, looking guy. Yeah. And the first thing we everybody obviously turned around um, and is watching and shouting mm-hmm. and calling stewards over and whatever. And somebody in front of, of me was shouting, "You racists!" Get out, mm. like we don't want racists in our football club, get out of the stadium, that kind of thing. Transpires that this guy was a drunk, the the, the, the Indian gentleman, mm. was a, was drunk, pissed out of his mind, and was shouting and swearing at, at this family behind yeah. when there was two little kids there. Mm-hmm. And the guys had just had enough of him being a drunk arsehole and just started laying into him. Yeah. Um, but, the, but the first assumption was that it's got to yeah. be the two guys' fault. And that that's, they clearly are racist. That's the thing. It's almost a reverse of you know what people would instantly snap to back in the day. So if there's like I really thought you were going to say reverse racism. No, no. But I was if, like, there's please a, don't. if there's a, you know, if there was a fight fight between yeah, you assume a, it's the black, black guy. guy and a white guy, they'd assume that mm. the black guy was the agitator. Mm. But yeah, it was sort of yeah, and it was just this one guy sort of. But virtually, or vir- sort of virtue signaling that, mm-hmm. that he was against racism. Yep. Because that two people of different colour skins were going at yeah. it. It's like it's so stupid. Mm-hmm. You, have, you have no yeah. information whatsoever. Yeah, and that's like the first thing you go to. Yeah. Well, apparently the, the the other thing that's come out about the Jesse Smollett case is that he this the investigation into it has taken so many resources away from other oh, actual fucking yeah. crimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one of the police, yeah. like yeah, one of the, I think this is Chicago officers or whatever, like going, they've, they've given way too many resources to this. I think there was something, like a bunch of other cases that were completely dropped in order to investigate this. That's insane. And people, those people are taking, I think they're taking them to court or they're yeah, writing a complaint or whatever. Like sort of young black men who yep. have either gone missing or been killed yep. and their cases still haven't been solved. Yeah, yeah, and there's a load of people who are writing and, or, or taking them to court or doing yeah. something to go, look, what the fuck, he's a celebrity and he faked it and you're and taking all the resources. Yeah, and you're giving them preferential Yeah, just treatment. because somebody's a celebrity, forget the fact that he faked it in the first place, just because yeah. someone's a celebrity doesn't mean that they should get more mm. uh, yeah. or quicker treatment or just more resources yeah, or more resources just yeah. they've, they've got their money and their high profile they've got yeah. money and their high profile that's that's absolutely ridiculous yeah. um but but just what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> faking something like that it's insane well this is just going to be really damaging to any other hate crime now because people are just going to be that extra bit skeptical and won't believe it and we already have a bit of a problem without necessarily believing a lot of the like someone says i was raped or i was sexually assaulted mm. and people kind of go uh, were you, are you lying about it? Yeah. It doesn't matter if they are or they aren't. Like, you you shouldn't necessarily go. You shouldn't go. You must be lying, or I bet you're lying. But you shouldn't automatically just instantly believe them either. But doing something like this and faking a crime is just going to make more people go to the one end and go. And you probably it faking allows it. people who are already. It's ammo, isn't it, for them? Yeah. yeah. It's ammunition to be like. To go well, look at that case. Look at that case. Yeah. Not good, basically. No. Not no. good. But still, yeah. at least it all got found out before, you know, yeah, absolutely. anyone had yeah. really been... I'm just really hoping stupid. they don't just let him off. Because I reckon they probably will. Mm. They'll slap a bit of a fine on. It'll be easy for him. What is the punishment for faking police report? I thought mm. it was... It it's can obs- be like probably a obstruction of justice, isn't it? Possibly. What would, would well, I think faking, faking other people's... filing a fake re- police report is a crime and it's... In and of itself. Yeah, I was well, asking probably, how much time yeah, you would give yeah, for that. It's yeah. probably bundled in with 
numerous other charges that would be filed, you know. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how uh, he gets punished, because especially if he's taken away from, from other people getting justice for actual crimes, then he should be. Mm. And he should never what, mm-hmm. get, a, well, not, not, he should never get a job again, but as, for, a, for a while, you know, the, he needs to serve some kind of punishment. And mm. that's just such a narcissistic thing. He should come out and apologise. And if he's got, if he's someone with influence and money, he should um, pay for, for, for people's legal fees that he's, um, he's stopped. Because that's just so ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Director's attention to the war to actually helping the problem. Yeah, rather than just, absolutely. Yeah. Should we do that? Yep. We done? No, no, I just wanted to very quickly. We've, <laughs> we've, got, we've, got, we've got time. We've got time. I just wanted to. Is, I would say similar case, but I don't know if you know about. It's to do with Me Too. Because I've been trying to find out names of people who. Like celebrities. Who supported the Me Too movement, but then have turned out to have been accused of sexual assault. Like for the hypocrisy element of it and the only one i've really been able to find at the moment is asia argento herself who mm-hmm. was one of the main people who started the movement yeah she fucked an underage guy and there was photo evidence of it and she paid him off Fucking hell. and so she's going to be like oh no but it was just a disagreement no, no. like he goes no no you you mm-hmm. took advantage of your position what i found out is i don't remember his name roman polanski Oh, the uh, filmmaker director. He fucked up. This is years ago, in the 70s. Mm-hmm. He like raped a minor. And uh, he managed to escape the, the justice system. They were going to send him away for a, a long time. And he managed to escape. And I think he lives in France now. Is that right? Yeah, it yeah. rings a bell. Yeah, he managed to escape and he, he, he got into France. And apparently loads of people still support him and are still like defending him and working for him because he still produces or directs films or, or movies or whatever even people like Meryl Streep and Kate really? Winslet apparently are like no no he didn't do anything wrong what the fuck? but these are also people who were saying hashtag me too this is terrible <laughs> yeah. and there was a really interesting thing well, it's like the Lena Dunham case isn't it obviously <sighs> she's known for her Feminism, I'd say it like that because I think and she's also actually really fucking harmful to it. Kitty fiddling but her own yeah, sister. Yeah, she's got her own story. She did, I'm not exaggerating. Childhood, it's in her book, isn't it? Yeah. Sort of childhood sexual abuse. But also, someone who works on her show, Girls, was accused. And they went from, you know, always believe the victim to, well, hold on a second yeah. here. This guy's really great. I've known him for ages. Yep. It's like. The hypocrisy yep. is quite Double standard. Stunning. Double standard. Well, apparently, I think George Takai did something as well. So he's pro did Me something. Too. <laughs> you know, he's pro, he's pro Me really Too like and pro like feminism and, and believing all women. And then yet he got accused by a guy of George Takai of harassing this guy yeah, and sexually like abusing him. And George Takai is like, no, no didn't happen i think yeah it, it was it did become a trend that a lot of people jumped on who maybe yeah. didn't think that it would come yeah. back to bite them but the weird thing yeah. this is this is such a weird irony so there was a documentary made defending roman polanski a couple of years ago jesus christ right defending him saying oh he served his time he didn't do anything wrong in the first place did he know? Go to he served his time, but he didn't got he got out before he went yeah, to prison. So, so. He, no, he hasn't. And he's living in fucking he's exile because he can't go back to the US. But fa- for some reason, most of Hollywood has like just yeah. ignored it and forgiven him. But Hollywood's the one that's so anyway. They made this documentary about him, saying they're no, defending him. He shouldn't he, nothing. He didn't he didn't do anything wrong. This is the weird irony. It was made by the Weinstein Company. Oh, oh God, <laughs> not, a good, not a good look, is it? I, I, I read that well, and I was like, is, are you fucking kidding? Yeah, yeah. And there's clearly, uh, A, this double standard of we're going to speak out against it when it suits us, but when our friends get dragged into it, we'll, we'll back off. And, and, and a group of people that are vested, have a vested interest in looking out for each other yeah. Um, whether it's because they've committed these crimes and they will know about it, and if one person goes down, so does everybody else. Yep. Um, um, or that they're, they're just, you know, friends that want to look out for each other in that sort of sick way. Um, this is an endemic problem. Um, 
in in these sort of celebrity circles. Mm. Uh, and obviously, you you know this because you're writing your, your dissertation on it. But um, not not only is it a, a problem that's coming out there, but the amount of people I was t- talking to some friends about this yesterday. Um, the amount of people that, that especially at university, have, have spoken about sexual assault, and we, we talk about it a lot, but um, it is such a huge issue. Uh, and I, I don't even know how you start to scratch the surface about about solving it. And I, well, I don't know if you'd want to talk about it. But I'm, not, I'm not coming up with any solutions. Yeah. Uh, basically, the US Employment Commission, I can't remember what the exact title is now, has seen that they deal with the accusations of sexual harassment and, and harassment in general in the workplace. And since the Me Too incident, I think they, they it was tried to, it was spun to kind of suggest that there's been a 50% increase in reportings since the Me Too event. Like, look how many more people are reporting. And it wasn't that simple. And it was a 50% increase overall in harassment, but not sexual harassment sexual harassment was something like a 12 percent increase what's the definition of sexual harassment versus the definition of like sexual assault well that's the thing i, I yeah this is problematic <laughs> yeah i read the un guidelines and it's nuts it can be anything like saying something giving a compliment touching somebody on the shoulder well, harassment I can be classed as sexual harassment would right. have to have a physical element to it. yeah that's but, but generally that's the, thing, like, that's the most simple somebody on the class. shoulder apparently can be classed as sexual harassment but yeah. it's so not, not assault though yeah, that's not, not assault. assault so the assault thing is more sort of trying to like grab them boobs. sexually so if i came up to someone and grabbed them by the boobs or anything else sexual assault which is hilarious because who would ever be <laughs> like, just, <laughs> i've just got an image of you walking up like <laughs> well, no, but I told you about the story. I told you about the story of my friend in Japan, though, didn't I? Mm-hmm. Who uh, I'm, I'm smiling, and I really shouldn't because it's still bad. Yeah. But in retrospect, you kind of go, "Well, that's that's the, as worse as it gets." For like, so here you hear like horrible stories of sexual assault and harassment and blah blah blah. <laughs> there was a girl walking home really late in uh, in Kyoto, walking home, and some guy was kind of cycling near her. And getting closer and closer to her and she was like getting a bit uncomfortable he leaned over literally squeezed her boobs and then cycled off that that was it which is still really bad but like it's a weird kind of awkward sexual yeah it's like the story that i read about there's a you know like k-pop they got j-pop in japan there was a j-pop star who like had two guys break into her home and like you know I guess assault her technically, but not sexually. And they claimed they just wanted to talk, and they were let go, free of charge. She didn't no pr- prosecute though, did she? I don't think. Yeah, but they should still have been charged. <laughs> yeah. No, I know, but obviously, if the if the victim home. involved doesn't want yeah. to, then it doesn't happen, mm-hmm. which is ridiculous. Because yeah, like, if you can clearly go, I crazy. can see what you did here. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you you should still be able to do it, regardless of whether or not they want to, to go yeah. through it, because you still have to punish the bad people exactly. who did the bad things. Yeah. Like, it's regardless just obvious. Of whether yeah. the person wants you to. Yeah. yeah. My it's friend, who I was talking better. to about this yesterday, got. Um, groped in in hb that doesn't surprise me but hb is a horrible place and and, and I, i've I, been groped in hb in when i dre- I, I, when i dressed up as as uh, one of the spice girls for halloween <laughs> in in in, in pop world i got touched up so much yeah by by girls and and boys Even it's okay because you're a guy that's it was how it, crazy. That's how it, is. it was. It yeah. was fucking yeah. crazy, and the amount of guys that would like squeeze my ass, right? And I, I, I was wearing some. <laughs> you turn around and go. You want wig, wig and like, and I, I turn around and like laugh because you know like, it didn't bother me too much. You know, yeah. it, it, not that it was, it was great, but you know, like I could have a laugh about it, and and sort of looked kind of awkwardly. And it was like, you really thought that I was a girl? Like, <laughs> they are you just serious? How drunk are you? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but no, I've I know it's happened to me. I've been in a bar doing karaoke, and some people have just started unbuttoning my top, and but everyone was fine laugh, with it. Yeah. And everyone was fine with yeah. it, and I felt so uncomfortable and couldn't do anything about it because who's going to take that seriously? Yeah, yeah. It's but if I went up to a, a woman who was singing and started unbuttoning their top, or whatever, <laughs> I would be smacked. thrown out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At, at the most, like I'd be well. At the least, I'd be thrown out. I'd be yeah. fucking pummeled, yeah, probably. Yeah, and that is the trouble. The, the definitions are just. And it's case I think by it's case. It's an issue of overcorrection yeah. with stuff like that because maybe, like, you know, 
years and years ago, a woman wouldn't be taken seriously for that sort yeah. of thing. And now, now where it, everyone is hyper, like, yes, we need yeah. to, you know, stop this from happening, protect. I just the yeah, guys have kind of fallen to the wayside. Just don't randomly grow people that you yeah. don't know. How yeah, about that? How about we use that as a rule? This isn't yeah. even like a sex, it shouldn't be a sex sex issue. Just don't be a dick. Yeah. Just don't yeah. harass Invade someone. Invade someone's personal yeah. space. Yeah. Just don't it's touch different someone. if it's friends and you know somebody's going to be okay yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, because then you've got boundaries. Yeah. It's all about, yeah, your personal boundaries. With specific yeah, you know, you know certain people you can and right? can't. Exactly. Like, not, I don't want to say inappropriately touch, but like what would societally be deemed as potentially inappropriate. But, 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 but you have some, yeah. yeah you like me and Louise and friends, I'm not going to touch you in any way. Nope. We hugged yeah. for the first time, what, a month ago, two months ago? Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Like and that's so three right, years, yeah. nearly three yeah. years of knowing each other. Yeah. But then, it's like crazy. on a night out, there'd be people like my housemate Brett, who you know, as, for for a laugh, we get quite yeah, close. Yeah, when you get drunk as well. Yeah, but I, I I wouldn't do it to you or Rami. No. Um, maybe like joke around with Rami a little bit, but I would not to the same extent because yeah. you know that different people are comfortable yeah. with different stuff, and yeah. you have different types of relationships with different people. Like, it's not but it, hard, yeah. I don't think. Yeah. Some people just don't think about that. And then there's some people that are genuinely malicious and yeah. do that and still go out of their yes. way to transgress yeah. that. And then so I think, I think the weird thing is, is there's a difference, but I think a lot of the guys potentially do it <coughs> maliciously. Mm-hmm. They're going, well, we, we're doing it because we want to do it and we're trying to take it's advantage of a situation yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But I think a lot of the girls do it, the ones who do do it, obviously, right. because they kind of go... Well, they probably want. They probably like it. Girl on girl harassment. Yeah, that is. There is also that assumption. Yeah. That guys are always up for it or always like. And the that attention. is that is the feminist argument for how the patriarchy hurts men too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you sound like you kind of agree with it. In a way. No, no, no. I don't agree with that because I think that's such a, the the premise of the patriarchy is that men are in control. We control everything. We put women down, mm-hmm. and you can fuck off basically <laughs> like there's no like what kind of Final system <laughs> run by men would also actively try to be hurting and harming men well as I a guess. logical would they, system would they not argue that they, it was like a byproduct though with, 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 because not all men are contributors yeah. to the patriarchy no they, they are oh they are okay. that's the feminist argument yeah, all men are work. contributors to the patriarchy well it's like the, fir- the third wave yeah, uh, maybe second as well. Really? Bit. Yeah, second was where I started going downhill. Oh. <laughs> Late oh, review. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's reviewing, reviewing like a series. Ah, oh, second. Though, wasn't <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, we got new writers on that season. Like, yeah, wasn't, yeah. Wasn't fair. <laughs> and then third, well, I just don't even mention it. But Network fourth, issues. that's just fucking unbelievable. Don't even start me on fourth. Who's coming up with the definitions? That, that, yeah. that's, that's the trouble. One judge might think, oh, you know, yeah. It wasn't great, but it's not kind of sexual harassment or than another. You know, there's no clear mm-hmm. definition, and I don't think there can be because it's up to the victim at the end of the day to make that decision whether they felt it was harassment yeah. or not. In my opinion, anyway. But then, if you leave it up to the victim, which I'm not saying is inherently a bad idea, but then you have the potential for people to abuse that. Going, well, I feel like I was harassed, and then so you have True. to do something about it. And you yeah. go, he just put it's, his hand on your shoulder, really like what? Tricky. Yeah, yeah. It, is, it is really difficult and it's not going to be easily yeah. solved. But the Me Too hasn't done a lot. So far from what I've been reading, it hasn't really done that much in terms of really empowering people to... It, okay, it's done loads to empower people to whinge about it online. Mm-hmm. It hasn't done that much to empower people to report it mm-hmm. and to follow through with any kind of convictions against people and alleged harassers it just they just haven't really seen that so yeah it's a strange activism then that's the problem yep that's the problem yep um right anything else i don't think so it's been a bit of a sleepy one especially for me anyway i'm I'm not feeling great i'm a bit drained it's the sun that's what happens when the the sun first comes out for the first couple of weeks you're like oh it's really nice but i'm so tired i've got a bit of a cold as well it's strange (laughs) oh Oh, great thanks jack Jack. but yeah anyway i think we got out out of the way everything that we needed to and hopefully next week we'll be a bit more alive i'm gonna try and get someone on for next week yeah who who, who do we fancy well we can either have someone like simon on 
Yeah. I think because I'm sure he's got a lot to say just in general. Or, or Electra. Or we can try and get Electra. Try and get Electra. I want to get maybe like James Dennis on. I'd like to get on. Uh, What's his name? The new one. David. The new one. No, Ashling. David. David. Oh, I thought you meant Ash. Ash. Ash no. Ashling. Okay. David. Yeah, David would be alright. David. 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 Yeah. I. I yeah. I, I'd like to get. I'd David prefer David. Electra, just for that more professional. Simon look. watches this. He's going to be pissed. I'm sorry, Simon. Simon, but you're but always welcome angels. on, mate. Yeah, anytime. Just message us or talk to us. <laughs> anyway, we'll book you on. Thanks for watching as always. Yeah. Take care of yourselves. Cheers. And we will see you next week. Links, oh, in, the links in description. Oh. Comment, tell us we're bad, whatever. <laughs>